almost was too late on that one. Everybody, <laughs> welcome to day two of our Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Welcome in. Come on into the chat room, say hello. We've got Paco saying hello. Hello, Paco. We got Eva. <laughs> What's up? Uh, Sam Peterson, hello, hello. Anna, good to see you. Matthew, Marilyn. Awesome, really nice to see you all this morning. I'm streaming here live from Adobe San Francisco and let me know where you're all watching from. I'm very curious, could be from all over the world. We've got Adobe Live in the chat, amazing. What's up, Jordan? Good to see you, thanks, Ralph. I had a good swirl, <laughs> good swirl on my chair. Uh, everybody, welcome. Like I said, this is day two of our Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay. Hope you stick around. I'll go over all of the details here in a moment. If you don't know me, I'm Kathleen and I'm going to be your host for the next two weeks as we go through these challenges every morning together. By the end of it, hopefully you will feel more confident in Photoshop and you'll also have a beautiful portfolio piece uh, to show potential clients or just your family, whoever you want to show. It's going to be great. Awesome. We've got Adi from Florida. Mark Jacobs from Redwood City, just down south. Awesome. Jacqueline, hello. Andreas from Germany, hello, hello. Florida, Cheryl, hi. Oh, thank you, Mark. This is a cool shirt. Oops, hit the mic. It is from San Francisco. <laughs> Aria says, I'm about five seconds late. That's okay, Aria. I was almost five seconds late with my swirl. Okay, so everybody, if we want to learn a little bit more about what this daily creative challenge is, let me give you a little bit of an overview. If you'd like to join us, you can go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. There it is. That is the link for you. And basically this is a two week challenge. It's gonna be running from the 14th to the 25th. So today is the second challenge. Uh, where we're going to be streaming every day, Monday through Friday, going over a different workflow in Photoshop. And by the end of it, hopefully you will feel a lot more confident and comfortable in that beautiful software that is Photoshop. Mm, Fadil says, greetings from Indonesia. Hello, Fadil. Good to see you. Hello, Robin. Tara, yes, you did just make it. Nice timing. Thank you, Sam Peterson, for the link. So if you want to come to this link and actually register, you're gonna, you're gonna click this big beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blue button right here to get registered. So every day you will receive a challenge once you register, either via email or coming to the site or on Discord, which we'll talk about in a moment. So you'll receive your challenge. You're gonna join community chat. One example of community chat is what you're doing right now in the chat next to this video. You are chatting live, but what happens when the live stream is over? If you still want to keep chatting, if you still want to keep getting feedback and giving feedback, we also have a place for you. We have a Discord server. So this is Discord. It is wonderful. We're going to dive a little bit more into that in a moment. Uh, after you join community chat and you are giving and getting feedback, you can also watch this daily live show every morning from 9 to 9.30 a.m., right before the rest of Adobe Live starts for the, the day. And every day I'm going to be going through an example uh, workflow of the challenge. So today we're going to be working on transforming in Photoshop. So using transform tools, uh, warping things, distorting them, moving them around the canvas. It's pretty simple, uh, but I'll show you exactly what I'm thinking for this challenge. And then you can take your own spin on it as well. We also have some uh, starter files for you. If you click get started, it will take you to a template. We have the book cover template and a new addition. This challenge is if it loads, we actually have written instructions as well as some stock imagery. There we go. So a little sneakity peekity about what we're gonna be working on today. Does anybody remember Shutter Island? <laughs> Did you know it was based on a book? It was, it was. All right, so I'm gonna be working through my work, my workflow here in a moment. Uh, but before that, let me go over Discord again really quickly because it can be a little overwhelming if you're totally new to it. If you've ever used Slack, it's kind of like Slack or it's, it's basically just a giant message board uh, where people are hanging out 24 seven. We've got mentors. You can see myself and Tim are here. We've got Adobe folks. You can also ask them questions, moderators and all of your other online friends over here. Yeah, Shutter Island. 
<laughs> yes, Leonardo DiCaprio. There you go. Uh, and this is the link. If you would like to join Discord, bit.ly slash PS Discord. Make sure the P and the S are capital capitalized. That is important. Uh, so if you want to join us, this is where you can post your current work to get feedback. So for example, this is challenge from yesterday and CS Cat uh, posted, here's my challenge number one, uh, a little bit of an explanation on how they designed it and then asking for feedback. So you can check it out. And then down here, you can type whatever you have to say. So either a critique or uh, some helpful thoughts or just saying, wow, that looks really good. So I hope you'll all join over there. You can also explore some other channels. For example, if you come up here to announcements and click creative challenge, this is where the challenge is posted every day. So Sam has posted day two, as well as all of the links to like the starter files and the link to the live show, which is happening right now. <laughs> Nora says, who says to their colleagues, can you Slack me? I say it sometimes. Or sometimes I'll say, you on Slack? You slacking? Ralph says, great movie for Shutter Island. I still watch it and can find something new each time, right? It's kind of a mind bender. Definitely a mind bender. It's not really a horror movie. I know the kind of theme of this challenge is horror book re cover redesign, but it's got some like psychological horror for sure. Chad says, like I said on Discord, y'all killed the first challenge yesterday. So good. Yes, I agree. We should look at some of the submissions from yesterday at the end of this stream. Very good idea. Okay, so let's actually jump into the workflow. So here's the design, it's super simple. I know that really uh, simplified book cover design is pretty popular these days, as well as using compositing. So uh, bringing together a bunch of photographic pieces and uh, basically creating something new with it. So we start with just an image of a lighthouse, which if you've seen the movie or read the book, you know that there's some importance to the lighthouse near the end of the movie. Um, it's a little bit surreal, a little bit, like I said, of a mind bender. So I thought this was appropriate to maybe break apart and look like it was kind of floating into the sky, like nothing is as it seems. Someone hammering in the background there. Yes, <laughs> there are mice in the walls and they carry big hammers. Where is Leo though? Oh, don't worry, he's here. <laughs> he would never leave us. Okay, so let's get started on this small workflow. Yesterday I showed you how to bring a file into Photoshop if you weren't familiar. Uh, and I'm just using the book cover template that we provided in the starter files. So I've just opened that in Photoshop and then I went to file, place embedded and I found my lighthouse image. <laughs> okay, so right here we have our lighthouse image. I've placed it below the text layers and on top of the background color, so I can still change this freely. But first, let's get rid of this blue sky background because like you saw in the working file, we just have the lighthouse uh, isolated on the background. We've got Keycaster on to help because I'm gonna be using a couple shortcuts today that might be helpful for you. All right, so with our lighthouse selected, I am going to use the famous Select and Mask workspace. The way that you navigate to it is you come over here to the toolbar and you use either a quick select or the magic wand tool. Either way, you can uh, also just tap W to navigate to that. Let me move that right there, perfect. So you tap W, you move to that tool and when you do up here in the control bar, you'll notice that select and mask appears up here at the top. When you click that, it's gonna open up a new window for you. I'm gonna zoom out with Command minus or Control minus for uh, Windows users. And you'll see that there is a purple mask placed on top of my image. I can change that color easily by just clicking the color swatch. Red is kind of the more typical color, so let's change it back to that. And over here on the left, we have a bunch of different tools. So I am going to just choose the normal quick select mask tool. And when you click, and drag, it's going to quick select, like pixels, and cut out this lighthouse for us. Cool, so it does a pretty good job first 
pass. Now if I zoom in a little bit more, Command plus, Command plus, you'll notice that there are a couple little details that are hard to pick up. If I try to actually paint over them, it will pick up more than I want. I'm just gonna do Command Z to go back. So that's when we're gonna use the Refine Edge Brush Tool. That is the tool second down right there. And when we brush over with that, it does a really good job of picking up fine details and getting all of those iron pieces of the railing selected. I'm gonna go back in with the normal quick select. Make sure everything is still selected. Good, good, good. Now for here, it actually selected too much instead of too little. So I can actually hold option. You'll notice when I hold option, my cursor goes from a plus to a minus. So if I hold option or alt and draw, that's going to erase. I can erase the stairs as well. Now it's gonna be a little bit difficult if I zoom in here to really get all of these stairs erased. So I can also use the polygonal lasso tool over here on the left. Hold option to make it subtractive. And if I draw a selection here, it will deselect those stairs really nicely. We'll do it here as well. Boom. How long did you all think it would take for me to actually get into Select and Mask? It's like my favorite workflow ever. I feel like I feature it pretty much every day <laughs> for these daily creative challenges. Okay, perfect. We have our lighthouse. Super simple. You can play with these different sliders to smooth out your selection. Maybe we'll increase the smoothness a bit. And then when you scroll down to the bottom, this is where you're gonna choose what kind of layer you want to output your selection on. So let's do, hmm, let's do new layer with layer mask. Click okay, and you'll notice now we have a secondary lighthouse layer with our mask. Cool. I'm actually just going to duplicate this really quick, apply this mask, so now it is just pure lighthouse. All right, let's start actually transforming. That's what this is all about. Once we've isolated, now we're gonna break this bad boy apart. So there's a couple different ways we could do this. Uh, Claudie had a really awesome daily creative challenge last week and she did this kind of surreal portrait where she broke this guy's face apart and like put flowers coming out of his head. That was awesome. Uh, if you wanna go back and watch that, that will show a different workflow on how to do this but I'm just gonna keep it really simple. It's only day two. Let's relax a little bit. Nora says, who would like to live on an isolated uh, island in the middle of the ocean with enormous waves crashing, crashing? Not me. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. Big waves are like my biggest fear. It is certainly a phobia because it is not very <laughs> realistic or normal. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I'm going to do this very quickly. Let's just move along from the phobia talk. I'm gonna use my elliptical marquee tool up here at the top. If you don't see it, long press on this tool and you'll see a couple others fly out and you can choose elliptical marquee tool. I'm gonna click in the middle of my bottom section of my lighthouse. I'm gonna hold option or alt so that it comes out from the center. Notice if I let go of option or alt, it comes out from the side. So let's do it from the center. And I'm gonna hold space to move around my selection on the fly. So what I'm really trying to do is just select this nice little arc right here. Awesome. Now let's continue our selection so that we have this entire bottom piece selected. Ensure that this option is highlighted. This is gonna to add to selections. And then let's go to select, inverse. So now, if I were to move this with the move tool, it's gonna to move the top up. Okay, let's just do that a couple more times. Do, 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 do. Now one thing that I forgot to do actually is we are gonna be, want this top part to be on a new layer. So what I'm gonna do is with the top part of my lighthouse selected, 
I'm going to go to edit, cut. So that is going to delete my pixels, but also copy them. So they're now on my clipboard. And then this is where Keycaster comes in. I'm going to do shift command V or shift control V on a Mac or on a PC. And that's going to place those layers back in place, but on their own layer. So notice now we have two, we have the top part and the bottom part. All right, let's do that a couple more times super quickly. I'm going to use my elliptical marquee, kind of following along the bricks of the lighthouse. Select the rest of it. Inverse it, you could also do shift command I instead of going up to select inverse. We're gonna cut it. And then we're going to shift command V to place it. Let's do it one more time for this very top part. And like I said, Claudie did a very different uh, workflow of this last week. And there's a million different ways to do this kind of thing. You can do it with masks, you can do it with different kinds of selections, channels. So if you have other ideas, I would love to hear them. But I really just wanted to focus on using the marquee tool and transforming today. I'm just gonna use the rectangular marquee tool right now. Let's cut that and paste it. Okay. So now let's actually jump into transforming. Is there a cat in the background that I'm hearing? The cat song might be playing. It was definitely playing. Which tower is this? This is, I think, a lighthouse from Cyprus. <laughs> I got it from Adobe Stock, but uh, it is symbolizing the lighthouse from Shutter Island. All right, let's select all of our lighthouse layers by clicking on one, holding shift, and clicking on the other end. Let's group them. I'm gonna do Command G to put them in a group. And then let's transform. This is what this is all about. So if you come up to edit and go to transform, there are a couple different options that we could do. Now I want this to look like it is uh, at a more extreme perspective, like we are really looking up at this lighthouse. So let's click perspective. And when I grab a corner, since it is grouped, it's gonna grab all of the layers and it's really gonna push that perspective a little bit. This isn't entirely realistic, like this isn't a 3D model that we're working with, so it might look a little bit wonky, but we won't push it too far and keep it as realistic looking as possible. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna click this check mark at the top. And now I'm going to grab the top three layers, use the move tool, move them up a little bit, grab the top two layers, use the move tool, move those up a little bit. Whoa. And take the top and move that up a little bit. I'm gonna select them all, move them around a little bit. This is where you can kind of have fun. I could even just select one, increase the size a bit. Command T to show the transform controls. Maybe we'll rotate this one a little bit, move it up. Hitting return to confirm my changes. Maybe we'll make this one a little bit smaller. Rotate it that way and over. This looks like I'm entering like a cheat code into Photoshop. And then we're gonna really decrease the size of this to make it look like it's really flying away. Put it a little bit further. Goodbye, Leonardo DiCaprio. I knew you well. Okay, so we have uh, made really intricate selections. We have broken this tower apart and then we've used transform tools to warp the perspective and then also move them so that they look like they're flying into the sky. There's a lot of different ways you can use transform tools, uh, but really just changing those base things like rotation, size, perspective, um, it's really basic in Photoshop, but it, you use it pretty much every time you use Photoshop, so it's important to know. Now to finish this off, because we only have a couple more minutes, I'm gonna add some really simple kind of perspective uh, markers. And this would probably have been easier if I hadn't uh, distorted the angles. So I'm gonna actually undo that really quick. We can redo it again at the end, but let's add the bottoms of these lighthouses. 
to make it actually look like it's 3D. So I'm going to come down here on the left side to my tools. I'm going to go to my ellipse tool. I'm just going to drag out an ellipse that is the same size as the bottom. You can hold space to move the tool, the shape as you are dragging it. I'm going to make this match as best I can. Remember, like I said, this is not a 3D model, so it's not going to look totally realistic. All right, over here in properties or up here at the top in the control bar in fill, we could choose black to fill it with, red to fill it with. We might even choose a cool gradient, maybe keeping along with the theme that we did yesterday with this kind of like 80s candy pop uh, horror cover redesign. And then I'm just going to keep adding those. I kind of like that like candy apple, pink and red gradient. Maybe that will be the, the one that goes through all of our designs as we go through the challenge. Okay, then we'll do our last one. This one's a little more extreme. A lot more extreme. Nice. And we actually want that to be below that. It might be too wide. Let's change that a little bit. Okay, cool. It almost looks like it's filled with meat. <laughs> That's strange. <laughs> cool. All right, and then from here you could select and rotate things. Now I'm just gonna go back to the regular one to show you how I'm gonna export this because it is already all baked. It's like a cake that's been pre-baked. We've got Shutter Island put in here. We've got our little pieces. We're gonna go up to File, Export, Export As. And we did this yesterday, but I'll show you how to do it again. You can change your file formats. You can change your sizes. I'm gonna actually change this down to, um, let's do a thousand. Mm, let's do 800. It was a little big yesterday when I put it into the Behance project. We're gonna export it, put it in day two. Lighthouse, light yes. <laughs> so much going on on the screen. There we go. And it's gonna export. <laughs> this reminds you of the horse from the cell. Tell me more, Leah. You see bubblegum, Pamela? Yeah, there's this nice kind of combination of like bubblegum and like bright synth poppy colors with horror. All right, let's go back to my profile and update our project. Omer says, this looks like my manipulation artworks. Awesome, I would love to see those, Omer. Post them in Discord. Now I'm gonna update my uh, Behance portfolio. Perhaps, although maybe it looks like I'm logged into the wrong account. So first I will show you how to upload this onto Discord to get feedback. So we are gonna go to feedback current challenge, and this is better actually. I wanna get feedback for my project before I actually upload it to Behance, because what if I wanna change things? So I'm going to find my day two, lighthouse. I'm not sure about the perspective, any tips? This is where you can get answers for any questions that you might have. Uh, for your design, and then once you actually upload it onto Behance, this is kind of like the finished product. So you wanna make sure it is done, done. You know how when you're in Photoshop and you're like, final. No, final, 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 final. You want this to be like your final times six. Like, your very finalist. Cause you could be showing this to uh, future employers and that kind of thing. So once you're done, you will upload it to here. And then you'll make sure to use the keyword PS uh, daily challenge when you're uploading so that I can find it when I search for PS daily challenge on Behance. <laughs> that should be the book's name. Maybe not. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. It's a pretty fun little uh, workflow. It's super simple, but it comes out with something kind of interesting. So I'm really excited to see what you all make. If you wanna check out other people's work, you can come over to Discord. Um, let's see, La Pointe just uploaded their Dracula cover. Very cool, very graphic, almost Andy Warhol-esque. And then for the rest of the day, we have even more Adobe Live coming up next. So we have a Photoshop screen, stream or kind of designy stream happening next. Yes, the beautiful, beautiful calendar. 
Awesome. Drawing and painting with fresco. Oh, even better than Photoshop. I mean, <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Drawing and painting in fresco with Doc Reed. Doc is awesome. He's going to be hosted by Julia, who is also amazing, and you will recognize her for sure. Then after that, Peter is going to be on with the XD Daily Creative Challenge. And then Kevin Lee is going to be back with more XD goodness. So we have some really cool things going on today. I will be back tomorrow at 9 a.m. to start off the day with day three. Wonder what the challenge is going to be. Any guesses for the book? Awesome. Oh, thanks, Jorge. Uh, I'll be back. Stick around for Doc and Julia, and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.